JJ, welcome to episode 34 of We Were Gamers hashtag holiday edition. Yeah, man. <laughs> Everyone loves the holidays. And we love it so much that we are putting this episode out during them. Yeah, on the 26th, actually. How was your Christmas and how's your Hanukkah going? You're you're dual celebrating this year. I know, and, and probably for the foreseeable future. Uh, it, it's good, you know. Uh, it's always good to see the fam. Uh, so, you know, I definitely never have any uh, problems at Christmas ever. And everything is always great. <laughs> you rolled with it, man. <laughs> you rolled with it. I thought you were just going to be like, uh, <laughs> production magic. We're actually pre-recording this. <laughs> yeah, the Spoiler alert, this is being recorded well before Christmas, so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, well, I'm happy that you are going to have a good time. I mean, like... Yeah, I will actually be at Family Christmas on the day that we would normally record this. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And uh, I think that dual celebrating like that is awesome. Like, you get to experience everybody's holiday understand the nature of the season for more than more than yourself you know definitely and we have a bunch of people down for hanukkah also uh so you know it, it happens that hanukkah and christmas fall on the same week basically this year mm -hmm. this is pretty exciting too like it starts on the 24th yeah i think or yeah yeah i think that's right so uh yeah so basically we're going to do some some Christmas stuff earlier in the week, and then some um, a bunch of Hanukkah stuff later in the week. So it's going to be a good mix there. You already got your uh, twelve presents wrapped. Eight presents. Eight? Also, no. <laughs> oh, you got you got eight days of Hanukkah, and at least four days of Christmas. Oh, I see what you're saying, but the days overlap, so that doesn't work. Or unless you're saying that I should give t presents on all the twelve days of Christmas, like that stupid song, which we're not going to do. Because no one has that many turtle doves. I don't care. I guess I, I didn't preface the joke very well. Because for, for us, we have four days of Christmas. Because we have four different families to go see. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. You were lacking some information for that to be funny. But, you know. And, and so also was everyone else just pointing out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that you explained it so that we can all enjoy the hilarity of that joke. Yeah, well. Is it funny? I don't know. Unclear. It's a little bit sad, <laughs> I think. No, what's wrong with having lots of Christmas to go do? That's good. Yeah, all right. We'll stick with that's good. Family is good, man. It's you know, good, we're dude. recording this early, like I said, and we're also recording it early. We normally record at night. Yeah, this is an AM cast. A rare AM cast appeared. <laughs> I need to replace this window. Which window? In my know. recording area. AKA mm -hmm. the office, AKA the studio, AKA the bonus space in this house. Uh huh. Uh, we have those old aluminum windows, and it's kind of never been really a problem unless it's super windy. Uh huh. Uh, but this street is quite loud at 7 a.m. I see. Uh, well, if it makes you feel better, I can't hear it. Yeah, it's just more of a. Well, it's also wet and rainy, so all the tires yeah, are so making it. Yeah, like... it is raining here also. Um, Yep, still currently raining. So. <laughs> well, everything makes three times the amount of noise when there's water on the road. That's true. That's true. Anyway. Well, for uh, the holiday cast, we wanted to do kind of a special short edition, obviously, because people are, you know, out of town with their families. They're on vacation. They don't, you know, they don't need podcasts as much to get through their day. But we still like you guys and want you to. We wanted to spend the holidays with you, so we thought we'd talk about holiday-related game stuff. Yeah, holiday-adjacent. Holiday-adjacent, yeah. Well, mine's more directly related, but... Okay. Uh, I, mine might not be so much. <laughs> you know, it is it is what it is, man. You, yeah. Whatever you find your holiday to represent. All right. Yeah. What, in your mind, is some holiday game? I think that this kind of this game related to me a little bit more uh, because it, it, it harkens back, JJ, as they say at this time of year, mm -hmm. in days of yore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when you yore had is more, a good word. Yeah, yeah. Yore and harken, I think, mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. it, required to be said. It's like, you know, the, that Hark the Herald Angel song is a good song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, 
hark is a good word. Harken is a good word. So, so think back. Tell me how much of like a little kid you feel when you think Christmas time for you is probably you know hanging with family with air quotes around it that I just did that you can't see. Okay. Uh, was probably more like sitting around watching TV. Yeah, there was definitely some of that. Yeah, absolutely. When you're younger, mm-hmm. um, you know, think back to the days when you could watch. What was it? Yeah, Cartoon Network a little bit more, mm-hmm. or stay mm-hmm. up late at night and watch Adult Swim. You okay. Know. So Adult Swim <laughs> and Cartoon Network have produced a series of games that have actually they're on their fourth one. Uh, I think they're they were Flash games on their website to begin with. Um, and you could play one or two for free. Uh, they're on their fourth one and they're now on the phones as well. That's very smart. Porting flash games to phones is cheap and easy. Might as well put games on phones. Yeah. Make a little dough. Mm -hmm. Uh, they made this series of games called amateur surgeon. Hmm. Have you ever heard of this? Nope. It's like operation. Okay. Like almost exactly like Operation, or it started that way anyway. Um, they're pretty vulgar games because they were made by Adult Swim, but uh, yeah, I was gonna say it's it sounds bloody also. <laughs> and it's not you know only just like picking things up with your finger and moving them like Operation. You um, you like remove damaged items from people, and then you sew them up, and then you like seal them, and you treat them with antibiotics and all these you know sort of complicated versions of that Mm -hmm. uh you play a character i believe is the same character all the way through the series dr alan probe nice yeah Uh uh-huh i get jokes that's a (laughs) joke i get it um and it's pretty it was pretty fun and cool as a web i played the first one on the uh on the web so to speak Ooh, the web the web through the flash which mm-hmm. oh god flash on a mac Ugh. you must have really liked it in order to endure that can i can we just be done with flash can we stop i mean it pretty much is it's still out there man i mean the um the walking dead uses it like you can see it go through adobe.com to uh light up its little uh what do they call that uh, drm make sure you're not recording it thing oh you're never gonna get away from it in terms of the like drm stuff well i mean but it's still flash it still causes any computer i run it on to like go nuts and that towards the end of every episode even when i run it on the pc like it just chugs along i'm sorry it's all jumpy tell you i don't know i just people if that if you are a person that is in charge of things on the internet Please don't use Flash. Help a brother move the world away from Flash. I think that's a good Christmas uh, thing to want, Andrew. That would be a nice wish for Christmas. Oh, yeah. That would be. That is. There you go. That's my Christmas wish. No teeth. My daughter's already got all her teeth. Please get rid of Flash, Santa. Oh, I see. You're making the the Chris. Okay. I got that joke, too. That was a good joke. (laughs) actually a good joke that everyone could understand unlike the last one so well approved. everyone that knows christmas songs it's fine two front teeth um okay so they took this series amateur surgeon mm-hmm. and years and years and years ago back when i first got an iphone i installed a game called amateur surgeon christmas edition mm, okay and i never played it <laughs> i tried it one time Okay. And I never went back to it for some reason. It's been sitting on my phone ever since. And I'm like, oh, I should really play that. Oh, I should really play that. And then I never do. Okay. So then when we talked about doing this, I was like, I'm going to play it. (laughs) All right. Does it even run? It still runs. I get a warning when I open the app. It says, warning, this app has not been updated and may slow down your phone. Sounds right. Yeah, and uh, it's it's not sized correctly. So when I when I open it up on the phone, there's black bars on both sides because it was sized for a smaller phone. <laughs> <laughs> and this is great. Uh, and um, it doesn't um, it wasn't programmed to do the, the like suspension in the background thing. So if you click off of the app and go back, it's it completely reloads and you lose your place. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty great. 
Uh, so Dr. Alan Probe is driving his new jet uh, because in the first game you go from unknown surgeon to world's like greatest surgeon. I see. So he's driving his Learjet and he uh, accidentally flies over the North Pole and hits Santa Claus with his what jet. Dick. Mean move. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not great. Leave uh, Santa alone. And then you crash land into Santa's factory. Man. Where you take out most of the elves and a bunch of presents. And to figure out what's going on, because Dr. Alan Probe was busy reading the newspaper at the time he crashed into Santa Claus. Instead of flying his instead plane. Instead of flying his plane. <laughs> very you, responsible doctor exactly you heal uh the first the tutorial level is like healing an elf that you've basically crashed into with your jet uh and knocked a tree over onto so you know um the jet crash however unfortunately uh you don't get all your tools from the first game because uh -huh. your tools were, yes, were they were damaged damaged in the crash so you have to use things like uh you know those grabbers that people use to put up their Christmas lights, those little pincer <laughs> things yeah. for old people, or uh, uh, holiday wrapping paper tape to tape up wounds, or uh, creme brulee blow torches for okay. like for sugar. I mean, creme brulee blow torches are, are Act, real blow torches. Yeah, they're so actual blow torches. That's but, fine. Yeah, you know, those other ones a little sketchy, but the creme brulee blow torch, yeah, it's good. That's or, just uh, that's just MacGyvering right there. <laughs> to uh, to to get people's heart rates back up, you hook up uh, bags of pixie dust to the end of a power drill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> uh, that's very you, silly. I like it. If you need to make incisions to like start somebody's heart again, you have a like a turkey carving knife. Okay, sure. <laughs> So it's pretty silly in terms of that. Um, so you you heal this elf and you find out you're at the North Pole and you ran over Santa Claus and killed all the reindeer. So you, the next couple levels of the game, it's very short. It's only like five levels instead of the normal, whatever the normal game was. It was like 15 oh, okay. or something. Um, and it, like you do things like reassemble Mincer, the reindeer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or bring Santa Claus back to life and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty lighthearted. It's very vulgar, you know. Sure, Adult Swim. Yeah, Adult Swim. Uh, right, remember where? But, I mean, not crass enough. You couldn't let a kid play it, but sure. But the jokes are there. Gotcha. It's pretty good. I enjoyed. I enjoyed my five levels, my half hour playing the game, and wish I'd played it before. But glad I didn't, so I could talk about it on this podcast. Cool. Well, that. So, would you recommend people attempt to find this game again? I don't know if this is still available on the App Store. I can probably look. We're not going to fact check anything, so oh, okay. don't, don't bother. I hope it's still available on the App Store because uh, the, uh, the, uh, the regular amateur surgeon games are Flash games, and they're, they're fine. I mean, if you're on the Internet playing Flash games, then get on the Internet and play Flash games, and I would suggest those. But do I think they're worthwhile phone games? I haven't tried the newest one. Amateur Surgeon 4 just came out, actually, I think. Uh, and by just, I mean I saw it when I was looking for this. For, the, for this. Uh, you know, when I did look for it, I didn't see it. Maybe it's not available on the App Store anymore. Mm. Interesting. Well, I should keep my file just in case. Well, I'm sure things are available on the Internet. So True. if you look hard enough, I'm sure someone could find it. True. Their jailbroken phone or whatever. I don't even know if you need to jailbreak it. Sometimes you just need to download the uh, APK. Da download the file. File and then put it in your iTunes and then sync it to your phone. Hmm. Okay. I have no idea how that stuff works. On, yeah. On the iDevice. Yeah, they don't. Um, they don't remove apps from your from your computer or your phone. Mm -hmm. So if you still have the app on either device. You can get the file and then move it to any other iOS device. Yeah, they let you keep it if you got it, but yeah. they're not going to give it to you again. Right, right. Interesting. Cool. I'll, I'll I'll check them when we post it, and if it's still on the iTunes store, I'll I'll put it on there. I did not see it when I looked back to see how many Flash games were on still. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it online, so I think they only ever put it on the iPhone. And Part 4 is not online either, so I think that might also be phone only. Okay. So... 
Anyway, by just, I mean it came out recently. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Adult Swim Games publishes video games, like real, normal video games, too, not just phone stuff. Yeah. So they're, they're making all kinds of good stuff these days. So A lot of them cool. are things that I don't know anything about because I don't watch Adult Swim anymore. By the time yeah, Adult same. Swim is on, I'm either working to try and get something done or I'm reading or falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, same. I don't. I don't really get to see it anymore, but I know for sure that they, they publish stuff, you know, just like indie games and, and some stuff that's cool. So Yeah. Pretty great. So awesome. Uh overall, you know, it was a, a fun way to get back in the Christmas spirit, which I have a decent amount of this year. I, I found myself Katie says that every other year she gets super excited about Christmas, and I think that last Christmas I was just too tired to get excited, but this one's the first one that our daughter can kinda maybe grasp a little bit what's going on. She certainly understands what a present is. I tried to put some under the tree early this year as oh, I no, wrap that... Oh yeah. No, they're all they were all opened. Yeah. I I could have told you that was gonna happen, <laughs> but I didn't speak with you before this happened, so I didn't know. Yeah. Well, well it was like a cat. Know. It was amazing. I came in the room yeah. and there was just wrapping paper everywhere. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. funny. Well, uh you know, I'm glad that you got to at least to you're getting the Christmas spirit. That's good. That's what you want. Yeah. That's fun. How about you, JJ? What uh what's your Christmas adjacent? Uh I'm gonna take two two paths here. I've got a little short little thing uh to talk about. Because as you know, Andrew, uh I have been playing Hitman. Uh and that is a game that definitely does not scream Christmas uh very much. Except they updated the game this year, uh, right around uh, earlier last week, to include a holiday episode. Really? Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. That's perfect for, for they, a holiday. They took the uh, the first level, the Paris fashion show level, uh, and sort of reskinned it. They put some you know Christmas trees and presents and um, and Santa Claus and a bunch of stuff in that level, uh, and then created a new mission out of that where you have to literally kill the two bandits from home alone. <laughs> are you kidding me? No, they don't say that. Right. But the names are the names and they kind of look like those two guys and they run around stealing presents that are hidden throughout the level in the fashion show. One of them constantly goes around and turns on sinks <laughs> to like overflow. Them. <laughs> I was kind of satisfied listening to your, um, your reviews of that game and just kind of like saying, okay, cool. I probably don't need to play Hitman if JJ is going to tell me about it. Uh, mm-hmm. It sounds exciting, but now it is pretty fun. I think I have to now. It's really silly. Uh, and so this is just a, a bonus mission. I don't know how long. I assume they're just going to let you can play it as many times as you want. They created a set of challenges based around doing stuff uh, in that mission. Stuff like... Uh, Hit, knock out the one guy three times with a brick. Oh no! <laughs> but it's that's harder than it sounds because you knock him out once, but then someone has to find him and wake him up, and then you have to knock him out again. It's like that's actually like a pretty long process because as soon as you try and knock someone out while someone's seeing him, then they're gonna shoot at you probably and you're gonna get killed. Uh, there's one to steal all of the items that the bandits are trying to steal before them, so they both leave empty-handed. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, there's one where uh, I'm trying to remember. There's one where you have to uh, knock out Santa Claus, take his suit, and then go around and kill both of them dressed as Santa. Uh, it, it's a bunch of just silly stuff, like really, you know, like lighthearted and silly kind of stuff uh, that's available for you there. So that was a a pretty good little holiday thing. Uh, and my second like kind of idea is that you know in you know christmas is a lot about family uh andrew and i think you agree with me on that yeah i think more than more than anything if you're not overly into the uh religious history of it which unfortunately i'm i guess unfortunately or fortunately or however you want to see it uh we or i am not i i see it more as a family time of year yeah yeah, yeah. That's really think, what it's about. I, I think even with the religious side of it, the family is still pretty emphasized. Uh, and 
I like to think about stuff that I would do with my family uh, in these times, and it brings me back to some board games, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that would be the time that you wouldn't be watching TV that I was mentioning earlier. <laughs> right, right. Or the TV would still be on, and some people would be watching it, but, you know, in theory, there's a board game happening. But more kind of like classic board games, though, right? Like, not board yeah. games we've talked about on this show, Catan-style so stuff. We're talking I, Monopoly. I think one time I have gotten my parents to play Catan, and they got through it just fine, but I don't think they were like, you know, the TV was on and people weren't exactly paying hardcore attention. But um, well, if you don't yeah. pay hardcore attention, that means that you probably ended up with longest road. Did I? I don't remember how that game. <laughs> it was several years ago at this point. But uh, you know, I like to think of specifically a game that actually is really not that fun in hindsight. <laughs> Monopoly. <laughs> oh, it was Monopoly. I called it. It was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, that you know is what? that is a game that I have played with my family for years and years. Not always just around Christmas time, but it feels like every year, mm, more in the past than free, than currently, but uh, there would be a game of Monopoly set up somewhere. Do you know the only person that'll play Monopoly with me is my mom? Monopoly sucks. Let's talk for real. I'm, it's not a fun game, to be honest with you. It is a very slow, very deliberate and very just like it's if you think too much about what monopoly is actually trying to tell you to do it is a not a good game to use as a reference point for anything <laughs> <laughs> well you know getting rich is is hard work man it is especially yeah. being a landlord get rich or die trying um i get it but also like man that game uh you know it, it there have been Eight million pieces written by people on the internet about why Monopoly is not a very good game. Uh, we don't need to like go into it, but it's you know it's the kind of game where like everyone already knows how to play. You can just sit down and you spend a bunch of time just talking with the other people at the table, right? You, the game of Monopoly also happens, and someone wins, and it's super irrelevant to what's actually going on. It's just like, it's one of those times where you just get to like socialize, you know, and like actually talk with people about stuff. Uh, under the guise of really just actually playing a game. I think that that's a lot of board games that are for kids, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, right? Like, how engaging is Shoots and Ladders, really? It's not. It's not at all. Uh, yeah. Or the game of, you know, the game of life is really engaging for younger kids. But I think it's also a time when parents can actually get them to sit still and talk to them. Yeah, exactly. I used to love Life, man. That game used to be, I used to think that game was so cool. I should find that article that explains why I think it's Life is not actually a game. It's not a game? Yeah, it's not. It's uh, 100% chance or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So yep. there's no decision making that you can make that makes the game any better? Uh, There is one decision you can make at the very beginning if you want to go to college or not. Uh, but you don't. You can make that choice, but you don't know the outcome because you have to spin after you choose. I think the expected value of going to college is better, but unclear. Well, I don't remember how that game is balanced. <laughs> the Onion just put out an article today that said the expected value of college is not worth it. So, <laughs> well, that sounds about right. Did you, you know? The article title was "A uh, Seventeen-Year-Old Decides Not to Go to College Makes a Three Hundred Seventy Thousand Dollars Savings Account." This is... Yeah, I mean, college <laughs> is expensive. That that joke is funny, except for the part where then that seventeen-year-old then has no job for the rest of their life. So, yeah, yeah, it's a complicated issue. One that we're it not going to cover at Christmas. It is. It's a very complicated <laughs> issue. I don't think sure. we can end the episode without talking about the Overwatch holiday thing. Yeah, that's right. They they added an Overwatch holiday thing, which I have not even loaded up to look at. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't understand people, JJ. You get you get a game, you pay mm -hmm. fifty bucks for it. Yeah. Or less if you were wise and purchased it on Amazon the week that it came out. Mm hmm You paid forty bucks for it. Mm hmm And they do seasonal events for you for free. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the opportunity to earn new, exciting things, spend your in-game gold that you're accruing because you pay, play the game all the time. Find on, some cool 
Santa hat, Santa hat skins stuff. and things like that that are all free and will rotate out and come back. And May turns into a snowman and with her ice thing. May. Let's talk about May. Okay. I didn't know this was going to go there. All right, let's go there. People on the internet, JJ. Uh-huh. Calm down. Apparently, because May's outfit is an outfit that is already in the game-ish, Mm-hmm. Reskinned and with a Santa hat, mm-hmm. they're in an uproar because it's legendary. So literal uproar that required Blizzard to make a response that said, "Hey, um, you know, she turns into a snowman and has these other effects that happen too, and we thought that that was legendary." Apparently, you know, if it doesn't look like she has some sort of, I mean, I don't know. Here's the thing. They don't tell you that it does any of those things. If you look at it on the store, or like you look at the your skin page, all you just see is it's May's normal outfit, but they recolored it to look like a Santa outfit and added a Santa hat. That's all it looks like. Okay, so they need to communicate better Yeah, what it does. So people were like, why should I spend the money... You know the or the the currency to unlock this legendary. Legendary is the most expensive version of uh, a skin, mm-hmm. and why should I pay all that extra currency for this Santa hat looking recolor of a hero? There was no indication on that screen that when she uses her abilities, she turns into a snowman. If there was, I think people would have been like, "Oh, this is awesome!" If they had shown an animation of her turning into a snowman on that screen. Everyone would have been down. Yeah. I assume. Okay. Because that's pretty sweet. I I think it's sweet. I mean, the ice block turning into a snowman is probably the coolest effect in the game. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I totally think that's worthy of being a legendary. Absolutely. It's just the kind of thing where, like, because their system doesn't, you know, or if they had some kind of, like, way of telling you, oh, this has extra effects on your other skills or something, people would be like, oh, cool. But instead, it just looks like a recolor, and then it's priced as the most. You, there's no way you can tell without trying it, right? Yeah. Well, okay. L- eliminating the th- fact that it has an awesome animation. Let's just say every... People should just calm down in general? Yeah. I mean, but let's just say they made just... Okay, well, every character gets a holiday skin, and they're all legendary. I mean, that's it, man. Like, that's mm-hmm. their choice. They want to make them hard to get because they're holiday skins. They want you to play every holiday. You got to come back next year because you only got one legendary skin this year. Yeah. Like, that, they could do that. That's their prerogative. Right. It's their game. It's content that, I mean, you ostensibly aren't even paying for, probably, because 50 bucks to. Oh, there are a lot of people that are paying for it. Well, that's your prerogative. Mm hmm. Yeah. I paid $50 to buy a game that I think that. I was well worth my money before they started su- doing seasonal events. Oh, totally. Or I absolutely agree with you. adding I brawls where time. you run around shooting snowballs at each other. Yeah, I heard that brawl isn't the best. Oh, really? I heard some people are like, well, this is kind of boring. Oh, well. But, yeah, you know. I think, uh, you know, it, look, people are, they want whatever is new and hot and cool. And spending money on the new hot, cool skin thing is part of the culture of that game i get it um you know a little of hey communicate better and a little of like hey people don't freak out about every single thing all the time yeah well blizzard communication has never been the best across the board but i really feel like communication about things like you know hey we made these huge changes to the game and we listed them in their exactitude versus oh well Sorry we didn't tell you the legendary skin does these things because mm-hmm. you should know by now legendary skins can do things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or often do, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I I actually don't know how often the legendary skins change your other abilities, like make them look different. I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. So we're not going to do research on it. And on Sweet. that note, <laughs> <laughs> happy holidays, everyone. We hope you have a great week off, and we'll see you next year. Happy holidays, happy new years.